Number 36, professional application. A 30,000 kilogram freight car is coasting at 0.85 meters per second with negligible friction under a hopper that dumps 110,000 kilograms of scrap metal into it. Letter A, what is the final velocity of the loaded freight car? All right, so here's a little picture. There's a uh, freight car underneath this hopper. All right, the freight car is traveling at this velocity, 0.85 meters per second and the hopper is going to dump about uh, 110,000 kilograms of material into the moving uh, freight car so we have to figure out the final velocity now if you realize right um, after the hopper dumps the material into the freight car we essentially have now uh, one single system right after the dumping so before the dumping we have two separate systems right we have this certain mass uh, that's coming from that hopper and then we have the mass of the freight car with its associated velocity okay now that being the case um, I'm thinking about you know what is the nature of this question like and it sounds to me like it's going to be an inelastic collision all right um, why inelastic because after the collision happens both of these items are stuck together essentially so I'm going to start with my conservation of momentum equation over here on the right hand side. Instead of doing initial and final, I'm just going to write before the collision occurs, the momentum before it occurs should equal the momentum after it occurs. Okay, before the collision, there are two separate parts, right? We have this uh, scrap metal and then we have this car moving at a velocity. So therefore, I could say that the momentum of the uh, freight car, right, which I denoted as a subscript one, all right, uh, before the collision, plus then the momentum of the... Uh, what do we got? The uh, scrap metal, all right, before the collision should equal then the total momentum after uh, the scrap metal is dumped into the car. Freight car, that is. So now I can expand on these terms, right? I can expand all, all three of these, and let's do that. So now it's going to be the momentum, excuse me, the, not momentum. I know it's so confusing sometimes, right? P being momentum, and then I write M here, and that's mass. Um, but M here stands for mass, not momentum. Uh, so the mass of the uh, freight car multiplied by the velocity of that freight car before the collision, plus then the mass of the uh, scrap metal multiplied by the velocity of the scrap metal before the collision, should then equal the total mass of the system after the collision occurs, multiplied by that final velocity. We are now being asked to find the final velocity, so let's just do the math quickly. We just have to divide this out by the total mass. Right, and we have a nice little equation here that M1V1B plus M2V2B, all right, all over the total mass would be equal to the final velocity. You've seen this equation a few times now, I'm sure. So all we now need to do is plug in the values and hopefully we know them and we do, right? So uh, let's see. So let me do it over here on the uh, left-hand side. Final velocity then will equal, I'm gonna start right here, the mass of the a freight car was 30,000. Okay, so 30,000 kilograms that is, multiplied by the velocity, and I chose the velocity to move in the right-hand direction, therefore it's positive in my problem. Uh, 850, okay, 0.850. Uh, then plus the mass of the um, uh, scrap metal, right, multiplied then by the velocity of that scrap metal. So you might say, well, doesn't this scrap metal have a certain velocity? I mean, it's being dumped into it. And the answer is yes. However, uh, the direction, uh, first, we don't know it, right? So we'd have to guess at what it is. Um, so that's already kind of telling you it's probably not necessary to know it. Um, but at the same time, this uh, scrap metal is moving in the y direction, all right? And I'm concerned about the final velocity of the system after the collision occurs, which, by the way, should be to the right, and if you think about it, right, this thing is on a track. So it's definitely not going to have a velocity uh, downward at all after the collision. It's going to have a velocity uh, pointing to the right. So uh, that being said, uh, I know that this velocity in the x direction here for the um, scrap metal would be zero. And therefore, this whole term just drops out. Okay. So now it's just going to be then, right, this would be plus zero, but I don't have to write that. And that's divided by the total mass. And the total mass would be the mass of the freight car plus then the mass of the scrap metal. All right, and all we now simply need to do is just plug that into the calculator. So let's see what we come up with. So we got 30,000, all right, multiplied by 0.85, all divided by 30,000 plus 110,000. And we get a value of, after the collision here, we get a value of 0.182, right? 0.182 meters per second. And there that is. Final velocity. 
So that takes care of letter A. All right, now let's move on to letter B. So let's see what it says. How much kinetic energy is lost? Okay, so we've done this a few times now, so I'm just going to start with the formula. Okay, kinetic energy lost, right, will be equal to the initial kinetic energy minus the final kinetic energy. Okay. Um, now in order to, now I'm going to expand on these terms. So the kinetic energy lost will be equal to then the initial kinetic energy. So remember that there's two pieces here, okay, uh, initially. So I could say the kinetic energy of the uh, freight car, which was one, plus then the kinetic energy of the scrap metal, all right, minus then the final kinetic energy. And remember the kinetic energy finally is just going to be the total energy of the system after they're taken together, right, after the uh, scrap metal is dumped into the car here. So I'm just going to leave that as kinetic energy final. Let's expand now on those kinetic energies, okay? So kinetic energy lost will be equal to, let's expand on the kinetic energy of the uh, freight car, because that's the subscript of one, right? So the kinetic energy of freight car is one half the mass of that freight car multiplied by the velocity of that freight car before the collision, right? Because it's initial uh, squared. And then it would be plus whatever the kinetic energy of the uh, scrap metal is. But remember, um, in this particular case, we don't know what the velocity is, you know, of this scrap metal being dumped into it. We're assuming that it's actually zero, although in reality that's not the case. But there's nowhere, there's no way for us to really calculate that because we don't know what it is. So I'm going to, I have to assume it's zero and therefore this whole thing will just drop out. Okay, so then it's just going to be minus the final kinetic energy value. So that's one half of the total mass multiplied by that final velocity squared that we found over here. So now just plug everything in. So the kinetic energy, kinetic energy lost will equal, I'm going to factor out a, um, a one half here just to kind of condense this a little bit. Okay, so it's going to be one half multiplied by the mass of the freight car. So 30,000 multiplied by its velocity. Um, which was before the collision, 0.85, okay, squared, minus then the total mass, which remember the total mass is just the addition of these two objects, right, of the freight car and of the scrap metal. So we could just simply plug that into the calculator if we like. Um, that mass would be, right, 140,000. And then that's going to be multiplied. I'm just running out of space, so that's why I'm kind of writing it a little all over the place. And um, the vo final velocity of that uh, system after the collision occurs is what we found over here, 0 0.182, right? So let me just move the multiplication side a little bit. 0 0.18, 0 0.182 squared, okay? So now this will give us the kinetic energy lost. Now let's see what it works out to be. So let's do what's in the, uh, I didn't close out the brackets here, but the brackets would have been closed over there. And let's just do what's in the brackets first. So we got 30,000. Uh, multiplied by 0.85 uh, minus 140,000 multiplied by, oops, well, I forgot the square there, right? There's my square right there, and I didn't plug it into my formula. Hold on one second. Let me just make that a little clearer. The square is there. So this thing is squared. Okay. So now let's try that one more time. So 30,000 multiplied by 0.85 squared uh, minus now 140,000. Uh, multiplied by 0 0.182 squared, and that result comes out to be about 17,000, and then multiply that by 0.5, right, because it's a half. we got to distribute the half in there. And uh, now it works out to be about, I'll put it in scientific notation, 8.52. 8 8.52 times 10 to the uh, third, and that's in terms of joules. All right, so that's the kinetic energy lost. All right, remember in elastic collisions, we, in, there's a loss in kinetic energy, whereas elastic collisions, there's conservation of energy. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you out with the next question. Have a great day.